Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I printed, sanded, and painted this really cool Red Hood statue. Uh, really happy with how this turned out. Used a bunch of different techniques and some different paint jobs, uh, and some different paints, some spray paint, some acrylic paint, things like that. Now, if you're interested in printing this out yourself, you can head over to my website, 3dprintedprops.com, or check out my new Patreon page, where you get four files a month, and usually a bonus for 12 bucks, that's the starting tier, and you get a bunch of bonus files when you first start up, so you can check that out. So let's go ahead, behind the fake wall, and start working on this guy, because I love how he turned out. So this Red Hood statue was printed, I believe, on my Prime, uh, Piopoli Prime, using the Smoke Black. And uh, you can see there's some, obviously, some support marks we're going to have to clean up, but this thing was crazy smooth. We're just going to use um, like a 220 because the, you know, the, the support lines aren't that much. Make sure you wear a mask. Crazy dusty. And you can see how fine this dust is. And we're just going to clean off some of the parts where supports left uh, left little pock marks or left little raised areas. But look at this hand. I'm not even going to touch this. The hand and gun are just crazy. But you can see here uh, where the supports were holding it up. There's some lines. Now you see these little holes there. When you're sanding and the powder fills those little makes those little holes white like that, you know you've got divots. So that's where you're probably going to end up having to use some fill. Now I primed it, it showed some areas I missed and some areas I didn't do a good job on, so I re-sanded it uh, to make sure that it looked okay, and I went ahead and added some of this glazing putty, which I love. Wearing gloves, of course, thank you for people out there, subscribers, telling me where to gloves. Uh, I've coated everything now that had some, you know, different little pock marks and things. I'm going to hit everything with a 320. And then after these processes, I'm washing the prints because it's all gritty and, you know, gross. And you want a nice, smooth primer like this. So washing, it takes care of that. Now, I'm going to go with like a brown jacket. Uh, some of the references I looked at, uh, of course, he was wearing browns. As I'm putting this on, I'm realizing I do not like that color. So we'll be taking care of that later. And it was some very cheap paint. But this is this great Tamiya or Tamiya gunmetal, and I'm just going to hit uh, most of the armor with this color. So things like his chest armor and his knee pads and things like that, uh, just to really sort of help with the continuity of the piece. Again, just like anything, you're telling a story. So there's the new brown, actually, right there. You can see it, and I'm using the Vallejo... Uh, uh, metallics to get in here and do the zipper. Uh, that brown is much, much better and very happy with it. And then just some red. Now, it looks like I'm missing some, I'm like really getting messy here. I am, I'm not the world's best painter, but I will go back and tweak and fix those little mistakes. Just going ahead with some black here. This is just some really cheap basics paint. All the paints and all the brushes that I've used, you uh, can look in the description below and find that. Again, we're using the Tamiya paint here to sort of, again, pull everything together, everything that's sort of metallic uh, and I, I see as or I want to be um, metal armor, I'm going to go ahead and use this on. And this way, uh, it pulls the piece together. Sorry about my voice. It is shot for some reason. I woke up this morning and I sound uh, uh, like this, a little froggy. I don't know why, but what are you going to do? So just some basic grays. Now, I was wondering about the guns. Do I go black? Do I go? But, you know, everything is so dark on him. I really wanted these to be like just bright, shiny guns. So, again, using this Tamiya, um, or not the Tamiya, I'm sorry, the um, Vallejo paints. Man, it stuff's like one coat. It's amazing. And now we're going to add some details because this is what's really going to make this piece really pop, like anything. If you could put the details in, you can really tell the story with it. And I love adding the red there and just the red in these little details. I realized the belt would look a little bit sharper if I uh, added some silver to like the sort of the buckle areas and little dots of silver here and there where buttons are this way, you know. And I thought, you know, let's add some more red in. So I added some red in here uh, to these little dots 
just again, so when you're looking at this piece, you're seeing all these different little things. This was a fun one, super, super fine brush. I love these brushes I picked up, again, links below. Again, tying that red color, he is Red Hood, through the piece. So I cleaned up the head so it looked really, really nice and smooth. I'm gonna hit it with chrome because this metal cast paint needs chrome as a base. And there it is. This is the same red metal cast I use for the full size Red Hood helmets. And it just looks really, really sharp. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on the details here, uh, getting the eye whites and then uh, the black along these areas. Uh, again, the more detail you add to a piece, the more it really comes alive. And uh, you know, when you're layering these things, you can cover up your mistakes because I screwed up one of those eyes royally and the black is helping cover that up. Okay, so now we're gonna do some more weathering here. So all the pieces that are metal, these, um, these shins, uh, the backs of the legs, the chest, I'm using a dry brush technique with a, like a hard bristle brush a uh, more of a silver color uh, lighter than the color that's there to make it look like you know things hit this and scratched it up and really make it look um, like he's seen some damage and again where would that happen it happened on the edges uh, it would happen uh, a little bit here and there on the face same thing with all of this let's add some highlights let's add some shadows the more depth you add to a piece the more real it looks if you put it on a little too thick like I did there, just go ahead back through with the black maybe and take it off. Now we're gonna use some tones here. These are uh, washes where uh, you, you wanna sort of flood the area. You can see I've got a lot on the brush and it floods the area and you wanna keep it off the highlights. And it's just really like a quick way to add some, you know, really cool shadow detail uh, to the piece. And uh, if a little bit gets on the highlights, you can just wipe it off because it's you know pretty much semi-transparent. Now, the coat, I wanted to muddy up these areas, so I went with the dark brown and wiped it away. Now, here's where a little happy accident happened. I got it too wet and I wiped too hard and I went down to that initial base color that I couldn't stand, but then I kind of liked it because if you think of like a, a leather coat, when it gets you know knocked around, it, that kind of lightness comes through. So I kept it and I add some more speckling to really age it up. I did the same for the pants along the seams. You know, where are you gonna take some wear? The higher points, the high points rub up against things and that creates wear. So that's what I was doing here. And then I went back through and sort of wiped it down when I got a little bit too crazy with it. Now we're gonna do some old fashioned uh, weathering, just some black acrylic with some water and you know, just brushing it all over the gun, wiping some away. I ended up wiping too much away and had to do it all over again. Now I'm gonna flood these with glue and you know with me and glue, I use way, way too much. That is a crazy amount of glue, but what the heck, these hands are never coming off. Now, I'm just gonna push these into place. A lot of times I'll use an accelerant. You've seen me do that. Um, links below for the glue and the accelerant I use. Uh, but the pegs, uh, were a good fit. You really had to push them in there and they were not coming out. And with that age look, they just look really sharp. Now it's time for the head. Again, way, way too much glue, but what the heck. And we pop that thing on. And again, a great fit, no accelerant needed. And I love how glossy that helmet is. Now let's work on the base. So I'm going to use a 150 because there's some layer lines on this because of probably how I had it oriented. So I'm going to sand this thing down. I put it on a uh, foam block like that, A, to help my hands out, and B, because it's smooth. And then I'm going to use these files. Uh, these things, if you're doing 3D work and you're doing finishing work, get some of these files. Links below that you can get in there to the fine work. But then look at this. I did not know why this was happening. Um, and I was not happy. But instead of getting angry, getting upset, throwing things... Uh, I sanded it down. I think there was some resin left over on that or something. I don't know. Uh, even though I washed it quite thoroughly, it still was there. So I actually had to sand that a couple times, reprime it, and then repaint it. And I finally got that weird thing to go away. And again, to keep the sort of continuity through, I'm going to go ahead and mask out the bat symbol here, uh, or the red hood bat symbol. And I'm going to use the same... Um, metal cast paint that I did for the helmet there. And of course we coat it with chrome first, and then we go ahead and hit it with the metal cast. They make this in a number of colors. I'm curious to see what some of the other ones look like. I've never used them. I've only used the red. I think I might be using the blue pretty soon for a blue beetle build. And we're just gonna peel this off and then do a little bit of cleanup where I've got some tape stuck in there. 
So I'm going to use this JB weld. I love this stuff. It's just a cheap epoxy to sort of mount him in the base. Now, instead of holding him for five minutes, I just went ahead and grabbed the clamp after I wiped away the excess because, again, I put way too much in there, but I wanted it to really hold. And that clamp will keep it in place. And let's take a look at how it turned out. And I am loving this paint job. And again, just the movement of the piece, how he's posed. It just, it has sort of like a nice dynamism to it that I really dig. And look at that shine. This paint is fantastic. Again, in all these little details, they really make the piece stand out. The weathering of the jacket, this is an old piece. Now you could do this so it looks pristine and brand new, but um, I think when you're weathering things, you really, really bring them to life and hide some of your mistakes. Now the one thing I really love about this statue is the posing, how dynamic it is, but you could see along the way there were some hiccups, some different you know, bad paint choices, some bad color choices, some issues I had with the finish down here, something was going on where I had to keep working on it. That's the thing. Sometimes things are going to go wrong in a build. Your best thing is to just, you know, relax and try to find a way around that. Uh, very infrequently is something totally unsalvageable. Uh, and again, I just went ahead and kept sanding and did a little work here and there. And I got the base to work out fine, repainted the coat to make it look better and really, really happy with it. So again, just relax, work on the project, take a break if you need to, and you'll get what you're looking for. Guys, take it easy. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I did. I'll see you for the next one. And yes, I am wearing the same shirt I wore in the last video because I'm putting these, uh, I'm recording these intros and outros one after another. So I'll be wearing this shirt and this shirt for probably three more videos. All right, guys, have a good day. I'll see you in the next video wearing this. Take it easy. Bye.